that I derive specific spiritual strength from the human strength that my enslaved ancestors displayed. Now go around here worrying the Lord and telling him to make it easy for you. He isn't going to do that. You're going to have ups and downs and trials and tribulations, misappointment. You're going to be misunderstood and literally cursed when you do your best. You've had some rather personal and trying experiences yourself. Are you afraid? We must work passionately and unrelentingly for the goal of freedom, but we must be sure that our hands are clean in the struggle. Till justice rolls down and the righteousness. We must never struggle with falsehood, hate, or malice. We must never become bitter. If we will become bitter and indulge in hate campaigns, the new order which is emerging will be nothing but a duplication of the old order. I was made conscious of the fact that it was an unjust world. But we also were told that this was not necessarily the way the world was, and we always had that greater vision. My daddy always had books in our house. He had to study. And there was always this fierce determination uh, to succeed and to survive uh, and to achieve in spite of uh, your present condition, because that's that's what you were put on this earth for. And they were amazingly without bitterness, even though they had gone through extraordinary trials. I remember one time, a white man, Homer, I guess that's what we call homeless today, and we lived not too far from the railroad, as many blacks did. And Hobo used to come by our house, and I used to, our oven, our stove, wood stove, had oven, ovens on the top uh, of the stove. And I used to steal biscuits from the dinner with sometimes a little piece of bacon or fat back, wrap it in a napkin and hide it in the warmers, we called them. And later on in the evening, uh, I would sneak down there where my parents couldn't see me nor my sister and enjoy a feast from my biscuit and piece of fat back. And I remember one day the hobo came by and knocked on the door and asked my mother for something to eat. And he called her Auntie. And much to my surprise, she said, Auntie, am I your Auntie? Whose sister am I, your mother's or your father's? And you hungry? I guess she didn't give him a chance to, to react because she went on with her questioning. He said, yes, ma'am, I'm hungry. She went back in the kitchen and got my biscuit out of the warmer and gave it to this hobo. And I watched it all, and I went out to the sidewalk and watched him walk into the sunset with my biscuit. I was deeply moved and unhurt, and I went to say, Mother, why did you give that white man my biscuit? And she said very simply, because he was hungry. And that ended it. And that had a great impact on, on my life. I, I appreciated my mother's posture toward racism. She returned love for hate, not eye for an eye. And she taught me that it was more important to be human than to be black or white. And that we should have compassion and respect for all human beings. Because she gave him the bread, not because he was black or white, but because he was hungry.